What's up, everybody? Mr. Forrest back with another episode of Know Your Bible, Know Your God. Guys, this week we're going to be in a chapter that has absolutely changed my life. You'll see why. Let's get right into it. Steve Jenkins, the invisible chicken sandwich, was feeling the squeeze of life. His team had made it to the state basketball tournament, but Steve had rolled his ankle, and his ankle was black and blue and swollen and really painful. He was feeling the pressure of his coaches and teammates to play anyways or else to hurry up and get better so he could play because all eyes were on their team and if they did well in their tournament they'd get national attention plus there were several private schools trying to scout Steve and recruit Steve and Steve felt the pressure and he didn't want to disappoint his coaches or his team and he wanted his school to get national attention and he didn't want them to think that he was a wimp if he didn't play but he was really worried about his ankle because it was super painful. It was nearing the end of the semester and he was having a lot of exams and papers coming up. Plus he had the California achievement test that he had to take and he was under a lot of pressure because everyone was saying he had to do well on his papers, his exam, and the achievement test if he wanted to get into a certain school that everyone was pressuring him to get in because they said that everyone who gets in this school ends up successful and makes a lot of money and is able to afford a certain lifestyle and Steve felt pressure because he didn't want to fail and get bad grades and disappoint his parents and disappoint his teachers and he didn't want to miss out on this lifestyle that everyone was telling him that he was supposed to have. Steve heard the voices of people on the news who were always chirping and every time Steve watched the news inside he felt anxious and he felt turmoil and he kind of felt angry and every time he'd watch they'd always say today's issue is the most important issue of our time. But they said that every single day about every issue. And at school, all the kids wanted to talk about politics all the time. And the teachers even talked about politics. And the teachers would lecture the kids, this is the most important election in the history of the United States of America. And Steve thought to himself, that's what you said about the last election. And I'm only 12 years old. I'm not even old enough to vote. Steve felt the anxiety that if the wrong person was in office, that the entire country was going to fall apart. For some reason, Shane Hawkinson had decided to beat Steve up, and Steve was afraid of getting beat up, and Shane would wait for Steve after basketball practice, and Steve would have to find a, a creative way to escape from the school building each time he'd exit through a different door so as not to get beat up, and at lunchtime, he would always sit with his friends, and he'd sit extra close to Mike, who was the biggest kid in school, but one day, Mike was sick, and he wasn't at school, and Shane found Steve at lunch, and Steve ran for his life, and he ended up sliding into the art room to hide where Mrs. Browning was eating her lunch and she looked down and said, Steve, what are you doing in here? And Steve said, um, uh, I was wondering if you wanted to eat lunch with me and explain to me the art of romanticism. And Mrs. Browning said, sure, Steve, come have a seat. And she rambled on for the next hour and Steve hated being lectured about romanticism. But even worse than that, he hated being beat up. To top it all off, Steve's dad had received a job offer that paid more and had better benefits. But it was all the way in California. Steve didn't want to leave his home and he didn't want to leave his church family. Steve didn't want to leave his school and he didn't want to leave his friends. He loved Mike and Ed and Sheila and Jenny and Lenny and Margo and he thought they'd be together forever. And Steve felt a knot in his stomach all the time. He felt anxiety all the time. It would keep him up at night so he wouldn't get enough sleep. It would worry him and so he would lose his appetite. That means he wouldn't be hungry so he wouldn't eat. And it was like this vicious cycle. He'd get grumpy and he'd yell at his sister. He'd yell at people at school, even his parents or his teachers. And he was becoming grouchier and angrier. And it was like this cycle because he wouldn't sleep and he wouldn't eat and it would make him grouchy, and he'd worry even more. And then he wouldn't sleep, and he wouldn't eat, and he'd be even more grouchy, and he'd worry even more. And not having food and enough sleep, it would affect his body's ability to heal his ankle. And it would affect his ability to concentrate on the basketball court or in the classroom. And things were getting worse and worse. Until one day, 
at Cousin Polly's Pizzeria. All the kids decided to meet there for lunch on a Saturday, and Steve got there early, and all the other kids came at the exact same time, but they came in different ways. Margo and Jenny, they just came in the front door. Mike came in the side door. Since Sheila's brother Enrique worked there, Sheila would come in the back door and say hi to Enrique on her way in. Ed had been waiting in the garbage can while people were throwing their garbage away, unaware that there was a kid inside. All the kids got in and uh, they all saw Steve and started walking over there and suddenly there was an explosion out of the trash can. Ed burst out and he said, surprise, happy birthday. And Jenny looked at Ed and said, Ed, why are you covered in pepperoni and Pepsi and smell like a stinky diaper? Yeah. Ed said, well, I have been waiting in there for over an hour, but it was worth it to see the look on your face when I jumped out and wished you a happy birthday. And Jenny says, Ed, my birthday is in October. Ed said, and your point is? The kids all saw Steve and went over to the normal table where they all always sat at, and they sat down next to Steve and they looked at him. And they noticed he wasn't looking so well. Steve was pale. He looked thin. It looked like there were dark rings under his eyes. And they were about to ask him if he was okay when Enrique came over and said, can I take your guys' order or are you just getting the usual? And Sheila said, Enrique, uh, the girls are going to split a medium pepperoni, sausage, and bacon pizza. Mike said, I'm going to split a large pizza with myself. And Enrique put everything on that. Enrique looked at Ed and said, Ed, the usual? Ed said, you know this. Enrique said, all right. One marshmallow gummy bear and pickled beets pizza with donkey cheese and banana sauce instead of tomato sauce. Coming right up. Ed said, I like this guy. Enrique looked over at Steve and Steve said, nothing for me, thanks. I'm not hungry. All the kids stopped and looked at each other and then looked at Steve. Now remember, this is the kid who tied with Mike in a hot dog eating contest at school. This is the kid who once ate 13 tacos in one sitting. This is the kid who could out eat anybody he knew except for Sheila. The kid ate like a horse, but he wasn't hungry. Something really was wrong with Steve. And as soon as Enrique walked away, Sheila was about to ask him what was wrong when Steve burst into tears and he started sobbing. And the kids did what good friends do. They huddled around Steve and linked arm in arm and they let Steve cry as they prayed for him. Steve finally started to calm down and they said, Steve, what is wrong? And Steve just said, I'm so anxious all the time. I'm so worried all the time. I'm not enjoying life. I'm so anxious that I can't sleep and I can hardly eat and I'm grouchy all the time. I'm afraid that the basketball team won't do well in the tournament and that's going to be my fault. And I'm afraid of what people will think of me. I'm afraid I'm not going to do well on my school stuff and I'm going to disappoint my parents and my teachers and I won't get the life that they think that I should live. I'm scared that Shane's going to beat me up and I'm scared that my dad is going to move us to California and I don't know what to do about it. Sheila looked over at Ed and she gave him a little nod. Ed knew exactly what that nod meant and he gave a little nod back. Ed reached in his pocket and he pulled out his pocket Bible. Ed was about to open his pocket Bible when he realized something. Mike had really been growing in Christ a lot lately. And everybody had noticed it. And Ed thought, maybe it's time for Mike to take the lead. And he handed his pocket Bible to Mike. And Mike opened it. He knew exactly what to do. He opened it to Philippians 4. He took a deep breath. Because he also knew it was time for him to take the lead. And he read some of the most important verses in the entire Bible. Take a look at what he read. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, Rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, 
which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Mike said, Steve, life is really complicated, and this might surprise you. But the Bible does not tell us what to do in every situation. Steve thought, it doesn't? Mike said, the Bible's not going to tell you what to do about your basketball situation. It's not going to tell you what to do about our political situation. It's not going to tell you what to do about your bully situation, about your school situation, about your family possibly moving to California, because the Bible does not tell us what to do in every situation. However... The Bible tells us how to live in every situation. Steve sat up. That made sense to him. The Bible doesn't tell us what to do in every situation, but it tells us how to live in every situation. Mike said, it's like this, Steve. Your ankle is hurt. It's not healthy. It needs to be healthy again. He said, I know, I've had sports injuries. You go to the physical therapist and they tell you to ice and rest. They give you stretches to do and strength building exercises because they want your foot to become healthy again. Philippians 4 is like rehab for the anxious soul. And he said, Steve, Paul tells us how to rehab our soul filled with anxiety. And number one, he says this, rejoice. Look at verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Mike said, Steve, remember the structure of the New Testament? And Steve goes, yeah, 5, 13, 8, and 1. Mike said, what does the 5 stand for? Steve said, gospel. Mike said, what does the 13 stand for? Steve said, Paul's letters. Mike said, this is one of Paul's letters. It's one of those 13 letters written by the Apostle Paul, written to a church in a place called Philippi. And he's telling them to rejoice. Now remember, this is the Paul who said in 1 Corinthians, I die every day. This is the Paul who said, I am chased by wild beasts in Ephesus. This was the Paul who was hunted, beaten with fists, with whips, and with rods. This was the Paul who they tried to kill by throwing stones at until he died. This is the Paul who had been imprisoned several times. In fact, Paul was in prison as he was writing this letter, and he said, Rejoice in the Lord all the time. And it's like he knew someone was going to go, Yeah, but what about... He went up, up, up. And again, I say rejoice. Mike said, Steve, it doesn't matter what your situation is. You are called to rejoice. And Steve said, Yeah, but what about... Mike went up, up, up. Again, I say rejoice. Here's why. When we are so self-focused, we're focused on ourselves and we're focused on our circumstances, that's when we feel anxiety, stress, worry, and fear. But when we focus on our relationship with God, which is the most important thing in the world, when you focus on your relationship with God, nothing can take away your enthusiasm for the Lord. So stop focusing on yourself in your current situation. Start focusing on God and your relationship with him. And here's what's going to happen. You're going to rejoice. Ed said, amen, Reverend, doctor, teacher, preacher, Mikey. Everybody in the restaurant just looked over at him. Mike just rolled his eyes and he kept talking. He said, okay, therapy for the anxious soul. Number one, rejoice. Number two, be gentle. Look what the Bible says in verse 5. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. A good way to translate that word that the ESV translate reasonableness is gentleness. Here's what happens. When you're stressed and worried and filled with anxiety, you tend to snap at people. And this makes the problem worse. Here's why. You're so focused on yourself and your circumstances, you're not even thinking about the person that you snap at. What about them? How do you know they're not experiencing all kinds of anxiety and worry and fear and anger? And you snapping at them just makes it worse in their lives. You're so focused on yourself, you're not even caring about that person. But when you're gentle to that person, you're, sort of, you're part of the solution. You're soothing that person. You're doing 
spiritual rehab on that person, helping their soul become healthy again. Mike said the first step in rehab for the anxious soul is to rejoice. The second step is to be gentle to everyone. Ed was wiping away a tear and Jenny looked over at Ed and said, Ed, what's wrong? Ed said, I've known widow Mikey Wikey since he was this big in the Lord. And look where he is now. This time it was Jenny who just rolled her eyes. And Mike kept talking. He said, okay, here we go. Spiritual rehab for the anxious soul. Number one, rejoice. Number two, be gentle. Number three, pray. Look at verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Mike said, Steve, prayer is the pressure valve that relieves our stress. It is the balm that soothes our anxiety. And here's why. When we're so focused on ourselves and our problems and our circumstances, that's when we feel anxiety and pressure and stress. Mike said, Steve, there's nothing you can do about your circumstances. You don't know when your ankle's going to get better. And even if it does get better, you might play the best you've ever played in your life. You don't know if your team's going to win any games at the tournament. It's out of your hands. You can study and you can prepare, but ultimately you don't know what your grades are going to be like. You don't know how well you're going to score on your achievement tests. You don't know whether you'll get accepted into any college. You don't know what your life is going to look like. These things are out of your hands. You don't know why Shane's mad at you and feeling that way about you. You can't control the way he feels about you. You can be gentle toward him, but you can't control the way he feels about you. You can't control the outcome of any election, and you can't control whether or not your family moves to California. These things are out of your hands. If you focus on them, you're just going to stress about it. However, if you pray about it, you're talking to the one person who can do something about it, and that's God. You're not in control of any of this, but God is. And as you pray, you're talking to the one person who's in control of all this, and your trust in him builds, and you worry about this less, and then the peace of God guards your heart. Instead of stress, there's peace. And the Philippians who first unrolled this letter and read this scroll understood what Paul was talking about. Because in Philippi, there was a Roman garrison guarding the peace of Rome, or maybe you learned about it in school, the Pax Romana. And this is the kind of language that Paul used. The peace of God is going to guard your hearts from stress from anxiety, from worry and fear, and instead instill peace. Mike said, Steve, don't you want peace in your heart instead of anxiety? Steve went like this. Then Mike said, then pray. So here we go. Therapy, rehab for the anxious soul. Number one, rejoice. Always. Number two, be gentle to everyone. Number three, pray about everything. And number four, think healthy thoughts. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Mike said, let me ask you, Steve, what kind of thoughts have you been thinking recently? And Steve said, well... I'm thinking, what if my ankle doesn't heal? What if we don't win any games in the tournament? What if I disappoint my coaches and teammates? What if people think I'm a chicken because I don't play because my ankle hurts? What if I disappoint my parents and teachers? What if I get beat up? What if our country uh, falls apart? What if we move to California? What if I don't like it there? What if people there don't like me? And Mike said, there's your problem, man. These aren't healthy thoughts. All the thoughts you're thinking are what-if thoughts. These things are all out of your hands. You are not thinking healthy thoughts. He said, can I remind you, Steve, 
of the song that we've been singing on Sunday nights. In their Sunday night kids program, they had been learning a song to help them learn this verse. And by the way, I will link that video down in the description if you want to check that video out and you can learn that verse. And he said, you have to think healthy thoughts. And here's where it starts. You think healthy thoughts when you rejoice, when you're gentle towards others, when you're at prayer, when you're focused on God and your relationship with God instead of your problems. And then your soul starts becoming healthy again. He said, last time, Steve, the soul who is filled with anxiety and stress and worry and fear is an unhealthy soul. If you want to rehab your soul and be healthy again, what do you have to do? Rejoice always. Be gentle to everyone. Pray about everything. And think healthy thoughts. This time it wasn't just Ed that celebrated, it was all the kids. All the kids jumped up and they started doing the Ed dance. And everybody in the pizzeria was looking at them and Jenny... Her face turned red and she just sank down in her chair. Steve started feeling hopeful for the first time in a long time. The kid saw a glimmer of hope in his eyes. Steve sat up straight. He took a deep breath and it was like the color started coming back in his cheeks. Just then Enrique brought the pizza to their tables and everybody looked around because they knew what Steve was going to say. Steve looked over at Mike and Mike looked over at Steve and Steve said, can I have a slice of your pizza? And Mike said, of course, brother. And for the first time in a long time, Steve ate a slice of pizza. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Know Your Bible, Know Your God. Guys, learn this. Anxiety happens when we are focused on ourselves, our problems, and our circumstances. Peace and joy happen when we focus on God and our relationship with God and on other people. Don't forget, guys, the basic story of the Bible is God made it. We ruined it. Jesus rescues it. God will restore it. And here's where we find Philippians 4 in all of this. So God made it and then we ruined it by sinning. Jesus rescues it when he came to earth, died for our sins and rose again. And God will restore it. But you know, God is in the process of restoring aspects of it now. For example, if you've repented and believed on Jesus, you've been rescued from your sin right now and brought into a relationship with God. And Philippians 4 is helping you live that relationship with God. Guys, you know what? I'm telling you this right now. If you learn this now, you will be 1,000 times happier than people who do not learn this. Learn this now. Make this a part of your life. That's why it's so important for you guys to learn this week's memory verse. Guys, so many things are out of our control. We can't do anything, but God can. Our memory verse this week is Philippians 4.8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Guys, learn this verse. Make sure you check out that link in the description below. I didn't make the video because I can't sing, but boy, this girl who did make this video, she sure can sing and it's a huge blessing. So learn this memory verse. Our extra extra this week is learn. What is rehab or therapy for the soul that is anxious? It is rejoice, be gentle, pray, and think healthy thoughts. So guys, do the last two weeks, do this week, and do the next two weeks. You'll have the whole block done. Make sure that when you memorize your verse and do your extra extra, Make sure you do your books of the Bible also. Those will be linked down in the, the description below. I'll have the books of the Bible, what we're learning so far. If you have those memorized, tell them to your parents. Have your parents email me and I will have a prize for you. I'll mail it to your house if you're far away. Guys, thank you so much for following along. I can't wait till next week. It's going to be awesome. But until then, Mr. Forrest, out. Ooh.